reading through my Bible because I was remembering the time that I was wondering what it was I was going to do in life. Now, I have a lot of people, mostly young people right now, who are trying to figure out what they're going to do in life, what it is that their job is going to be, what their life is going to be like, where they're going to live. And my advice to them is really just ask God. Because if we put God into the equation of us plus life, then it's going to equal success. Um, doesn't mean that we're going to be rich and famous. Maybe not. But we're going to have success in life doing the will of God. Well, success for me is being a writer. Because, um, well, basically because I asked God what he wanted me to do. <laughs> and um, it happened when my kids were all grown up. And I was a homeschool mom prior to that. So for 18 years, I was a homeschool teacher. I did a little teaching outside the home. And then I did a little bit of tutoring on the side. But seriously, teaching was what I did. I even had a ladies Bible study that I did. That was more teaching, right? So when I got to the end of my youngest's high school years and sent him off to college, I asked him, what even will I do now? And I wrote that in here. And the answer that I have here is that I opened to fix on this page to fix it, and, and my eyes looked at this word that said, write. So to me, that was the answer. I didn't come to this page on purpose. It was wrinkled, and I was just fixing it. But it said the word, write. So I looked, and in Psalm 45, verse 1, it says, is the pen of a ready writer. So I'm going to look there at Psalm 45. And I'm going to find that scripture because, you know, it's really important when you get, when you look at the back and you're looking for an answer and you look in your index and you get a portion of it, it might not even be talking about what you think it's going to talk about. So it's really important to look it up. So Psalm 45, and it says, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. Oh, that sounds like a writer to me. I recite my composition concerning the king. Ah, the king. That's with a capital K. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Wow. So when I read this one, and it talks about writing and speaking and basically living your life according to God throughout the entire Psalm of 45. You can read it for yourself. But, you know, it really gave me encouragement that writing really was what I should be doing. Now, I had been writing. I've been writing a, a weekly devotional since 1989. No, 1998. Sorry. Um, so I've been writing consistently. I've only missed a few of them. Mostly when my parents died, I missed a couple there. But the, the whole point is that I kept going with it because God kept giving me something to write. <laughs> And basically, that's the thing. When he gives me words, I will write them. And it, the inspiration comes from reading the word. Because I don't just suddenly go, Oh, I think I'll write about sunshine today. I say that because today I was sitting out and basking in the sun. And just totally enjoying the sun's rays on me. I even closed my eyes and just really enjoyed it. And it made me think about basking in his presence, the sun's presence. So I thought I might just write about that and I'll be putting that in my book that I'm working on. Because when we're basking in the sun and we can feel the radiant warmth that comes down on us, it's very much like when we are kneeling in prayer and we are just spending our time talking with God and just being there and knowing that he is there and listening for that still small voice. I encourage you to do that, to bask in his presence today. And when we're spending that time in his presence, we need to wait for him. We need to wait for the answer. Throughout the Psalms, you can find words telling us to wait on the Lord and to be of good courage because he will strengthen our heart when we wait on him. 
So I want to encourage you to do that, to wait on the Lord and bask in his presence today. And ask him what it is that you would like, that he would like for you to do. Because he knows. I mean, maybe you don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. Maybe you're sitting there watching this on your phone while you're waiting in line someplace. And you're thinking, I don't even know what tomorrow's going to bring. I might be losing my house. I might be losing my car. You know, whoever you are, trust God and ask him what you should do next. Seek him and you will find him. I know that's true because the word of God says so. When you seek for him with your whole heart. So sit, be serious about it. Get serious about God. Ask him what to do and then look for those answers because they will come before you. They're not just going to be, you know, sitting over here where you can't see them. They're going to be in front of you, what he wants you to do. A job has always come to me when I've asked God, what should I do? And I've been able to pay my bills, feed myself, all of that stuff. Back in my single days, in my young adult years, I had job after job after job. I didn't have to wait very long. And I always had a meal from nowhere <laughs> when I didn't even tell anybody that I was out of food bags of groceries would show up on my porch because I was living my life towards him I was looking towards him for my direction and my guidance and he was directing somebody else <laughs> to me and like I mentioned before I got a wood stove once because God provided it and he will provide for you but our part is to live our life according to his will. And then we'll see those blessings come upon us. So, um, sometimes the words that we read don't seem to matter in our lives. And maybe they're not meant for today. It's not like a horoscope, you know. You can't read it and say, oh God, what is my day going to be today? Well, I mean, you could, and sometimes it actually matches up. But, you know, for instance, I just turned to this page in 145 uh, from verse 16 to 21. It's pretty encouraging because it says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him. Wow. Now that was ordained by God. I couldn't have just picked that page on my own and randomly flipped to it. Nope. That's a word for somebody. Because God will provide for you. Just seek him. Read the word. Get encouraged by it. And then do the steps that you know you're supposed to do. He'll make it He'll make it known to you, just like he did this one here to me. And go and read 145, Psalm 145, for yourself today. You might find something good that's uh, right there. So, you know, when I'm writing sometimes... I sit and I ask God what exactly he wants me to write about. And then I'll just start with my daily readings that are like in my phone or wherever. And I'll go from that to the next thing to the next thing. And till something really speaks to my heart. Just like that scripture did right now. And I felt like I had to read it to you. That's the way God works with me as a writer. And I know I'm supposed to be a writer because he keeps giving me things to write. So if you're a preacher... He's going to give you things to speak on to the people and encourage them to do the right thing. He's going to encourage them to walk worthy of his calling, which is what we all want to do, is walk worthy. Now, we're obviously none of us are worthy of salvation. But when he calls us, he qualifies us. He makes it so that we can do what it is that he wants us to do. So I want you to think about today, while you're trying to figure out your life and what you're going to do next, to put God first. Ask Him. Ask God. 
should you buy this new house? Ask God. Then line up the, the things and see which one you have the peace for. Because if you have peace, then you know that it's of God. If you have confusion, you know it's not of God. Because God is not the author of confusion. The enemy is. Also known as the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him. So the bad guy. He's the one that gives us confusion. So if you're confused about something, you probably aren't doing what God wants. If you have peace, you probably are. And really, you know the difference and God knows the difference. So don't try to fool yourself. <laughs> so um, that's just about all that I have to talk about today. But I want you to remember to take some time to bask in his presence this week. And read the Psalms because they're really encouraging. And they can make you feel like you're drawn closer to him. And um, when I say drawn closer to him, I mean focus on him and his word. Because when we do that, it gives us much more peace. It gives us encouragement and directs us where to go in life. So I'm going to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for all of the people who are searching for your will in their lives. Lord, I lift up those who are looking for jobs, that you would provide their jobs. I look... I, I lift up people who are looking for a financial increase so that they can live without fear of paying the bills, Lord, that you would provide that for them. Give them raises. Lord, for those who are looking for healing in their bodies, I ask that you would heal them. I ask that you would give them the desires of their heart when they seek your will in their lives and walk in it. And I thank you for these things, Lord. I thank you that you will give us the directions to walk in your will in Jesus name and I thank you for that thanks for stopping by for coffee and tea